Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Welcome to Throwback Thursday at Baxter Cycle. And look what they've laid out for us today. This is an amazing bike with a great story. It uh, used to belong to a friend of mine. I put a few miles on it before and uh, today we're gonna go take that hot rod for a ride. Let's roll, wahoo. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of work, my friends. Okay, shifter, this is a four-speed box. Up is first gear, and the rest are down. These infills are supposed to have incredibly good transmissions. Shift very well. Let's try the rear brake out, it works. It's got a dual shoe front brake, and that works. <laughs> I think I'm in first gear, I'm not sure. I might be in second. No. Nice, very nice. Shifter's on the right, brake is on the left. What a beautiful little machine. 499 cc, single cylinder, overhead valves, the cams in the chest. Very interesting. I'm uh, trying to concentrate on the shifting and things like that. There's second gear, I had to push it down to go into second. Second, third, and fourth are all down. Handle's pretty darn nice. Loads of torque, really. <laughs> what a grin. What an absolute grin. Put her back into, just put her back into first gear. All right, let's see what kind of turning we do here. Oh. Excellent, excellent. Notice all the sand on the road. <laughs> what an absolute grin this thing is. I like it. Second gear is down. Very nice. Third gear. The engine and the transmission are separate units. Downshifting is actually upshifting in this bike. We should be in first gear now. The transmission is bolted to the back of the engine. <laughs> I love it. Look at that chronometric uh, speedometer there. It goes in increments. Shifting is a interesting thing. Not only is it on the right side, but it's the opposite of normal. That must be neutral. Apparently I found another neutral. <laughs> Beautiful. My understanding is that when you get going down the highway on this thing, it smooths right out. So the brakes on this, I think it's a uh, six inch shoe on the front, double shoe, two thin shoes. There's two cables off the brake lever. And then the rear is a single uh, brake shoe. We'll look at that when we get stopped. Big truck, big truck. What a grin. Second is down. I really like this. This is sweet. There's vibration in the bars, but when you get to a certain point, it all kind of goes away. Very nice. What a treat. Like in the 1957 Royal Enfield Bullet 500. Uh, they did not release 500 bullets into the United States this year. They were all, they all came over as Indians. I have to concentrate on my shifting here. However, this one was released in England. They did release them in England. This bike was bought by a fellow over in England. He rode it over there and then he uh, shipped it to the States. And that's how this actual British Royal Enfield bullet made it to America. What a treat, what a treat. It's a very interesting ride, a very interesting thing to ride. 
that shifter being on the uh, opposite, you know, one up, three down is a different thing for sure. Just starting to get the hang of that. There is a neutral finder for the higher gears, but I'm not even going to mess with that. First off, I think it only works between uh, third and fourth gear, and uh, we aren't really doing a lot of that. The downshift, we go up. The upshift, we go down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, if y'all are interested in a bike like this, or a new or used Royal Enfield Triumph classic British bike like this, get yourself down here to Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa, or check out BaxterCycle.com. They can help you with uh, your motorcycle, with accessories, with parts, with all kinds of good stuff. They've got it all. <laughs> An absolute hoot this is. Ask for uh, Randy or Jeremy or uh, Mark. They can help you out. That is the 2017 bullet right there. So I am on a 1957 Royal Enfield bullet. This is made at the Redditch factory in England somewhere. And that is an Indian made 2017 Royal Enfield bullet made in India. Well, let's see, how do I turn this thing off? A little bit of the compression release, I suppose. Well, that was certainly an interesting ride. Let's take a look at these hot rods. Like I said, 1957 Royal Enfield Bullet, 500 cc, and over yonder is a 2017, 50 years later, Royal Enfield Classic. Kind of like a bullet, but uh, you know, similar but different. So this one is a 499 cc aluminum head, cast iron barrel, overhead valves. The cam's down here somewhere. This has got a uh, Lucas Magneto to run it. It's got the uh, Amala concentric carburetor. I think this bike was one of the first ones with an alternator. And uh, I know it came out of the factory with a six volt alternator, but it was converted to a 12 volt later. And it was also converted to a coil bike later by a guy that, uh, by the guy that brought it back from England over to, to the States. Now this bike was owned by a good friend of mine and he has a pension for putting things back to the way they were. I know he got rid of the coil, put the mag system back in. I did say he put the concentric carburetor and I think it had a, I think it had a monoblock on it. And I'm not sure if he put it back to a six volt you know, like it originally had, or if it's a 12 volt system now. I think this is a primitive rectifier right here. Four speed transmission. It's a uh, one up, three down. There's the uh, same symboling right there. This is a neutral finder. So if you're in a third or fourth gear, you kick back on this and it'll put it in the neutral. The transmission is separate from the engine. However, it's bolted directly to the back of the engine. And there's a primary adjuster that you can uh, use to adjust the chain. A little bit about this engine. It's a dry sump engine. However, the sump for the oil is actually back here. So it's a dry sump engine, but the sump is internal to the case. And these are the two pumps. One's a scavenge and one's a pressure pump. Uh, adjust your uh, lifters in here. Isn't that just gorgeous? I, 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 the, to me, this is art, my friend. You've heard me say this before, and I go on and on, about, on, and on about it, but uh, it really is. Another thing about this, this is 57. This is the first year of this kind of frame, of this particular style of frame. And if you look at it, the engine actually hangs from the frame. There's no frame structure underneath the engine. It hooks to the front of the engine right here, and hooks to the back of the transmission and to the engine right here. Really neat, isn't it? I just love this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's just... You know, really an interesting looking thing. And of course, here's the primary. If you look at this, you'll notice the uh, primary doesn't have any screws or bolts around the edges. It's a central bolt, squeezes it on, and that's supposed to keep the oil down. I suppose it worked. This looks like a vent for the case, crankcase. What else can we see here? Fuel line, this is the on off for the fuel. Uh, in here is an air box. I don't know if the air box is on this side or the other side, probably the other side. And also a little bit of a tool compartment. Uh, looking over here, it's got a drum brake on the back. I'm not sure what size that is. And of course, you all know how I love these mechanical brakes. You know, the lever, the fulcrum point here, the arm. Uh, here's the uh, thing for the brake light, the uh, microelectronics of the day. This thing, this rod goes over here to attach this arm. That's you adjust the brake right there, little spring there. The chain is adjusted with these snail adjusters right here. Of course, it's got these shocks on here. So I read an article about the bike and its owner, whose name was uh, Rob Marsh. And he talked about how he rebuilt these shocks and uh, he, what he did was drain all the oil out of it, drill these holes in, put oil in it so it was about right, and then he put the, you know, put these screws back in and that's how he did it. And he said, he said it worked good. 
forgot. This is the speedo drive on the back, by the way. Speedos a lot of times are ridden, you know, run off the back in the old days. Isn't that neat? Uh, front. I think this is a six inch brake, but it's a dual shoe. So there's one shoe on this side. You can see the lever right there. And then there's another one on this side. And there's a lever right there. And uh, they had not geared up to where they were making a wide shoe yet. So what it had was two half shoes, or what we would call half shoes. Very interesting thing. You had to keep it adjusted right. Otherwise, you know, one shoe would do all the work and the other wouldn't. Now, if you look up here, here's the brake lever, two cables, and this little adjuster here, this little thing here, see, but uh, cable upper cable, lower cable. Kind of an interesting uh, solution, you know, for that era. This is a choke, by the way. Big old metal fender, telescoping forks with covers over them on the front. I love this old nacelle look right here. Looks a lot like the, uh, you know, the modern classics of uh, barred off of this, the tiger eyes or pilot lights, whatever you want to call them. But isn't that just gorgeous little knee pads, the chrome covering, pinstriping. This is the color the bike came out of from the factory. I don't know if this is original paint or not, but the, that would be uh, quite a fee, wouldn't it? 50 years. Isn't that just gorgeous? Swing arm right there. Just a beautiful thing. Again, the snail adjuster. Look at that fender. Just beautifully done. The seat was redone also. Uh, it's incredibly soft. Yeah, I mean, and uh, it, although it looks like the original seat, it, uh, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that just beautiful? Let's look at the gauges. Mirror on the end. I don't know if that's original. I doubt that's original again. Horn here. Uh, I suppose the high lows. Lights would be a low light and a high light. The Smith's gauge here, made in uh, England. And uh, it's one of those chromatic or chronometric, I guess, and it does it goes up in increments, kind of like a clock. It says 54,000 on here. Now, the article I read about this by uh, this Marsh fellow, he says uh, the bike, he had put 70,000 on this, so I'm sure this is on its second trip at least. Little amp meter there. Choke right there. Just a really neat looking thing. Sitting on this thing, it feels really good. I mean, it just feels like a really neat motorcycle when you sit on it. It, you know, it looks... I don't want to say it looks big. It doesn't look small. But when you sit on it, it, it feels so manageable, you know. Engine was supposed to put out 27 horsepower. The gearbox is called an Albion gearbox, and those were supposed to be extra smooth, which this one was pretty good. But, uh, weight on this motorcycle, I found 370 pounds, 168 kilograms. I don't know if that's dry or wet. Seat height was uh, 31 inches, which is 871 millimeters, 877 millimeters. Wheelbase is supposed to be 54 inches, 1,372 millimeters and we talked about the it says six inch drum on the front drums on the front seven inch drum on the rear the front tire is a three and a quarter by 19 the rear tire is a three and a half by 19 just a real neat thing isn't it just a really neat thing all right let's take a quick look at this uh, modern version of the same motorcycle right away the frames are different you can see that right away they both have a single down tube the frame in this bike goes under the engine where the frame on this bike does not this whole rear end is different, of course. The back part of the frame, this here, the frame loops up and comes back with the arms that go out. Over here, the you know, this goes all the way out with the backs. Different kind of seat, of course. Big single cylinder 500. I don't think you had to adjust the valves on this anymore. This still has a Kickstarter, but it also has an electric start right there. And of course, this is fuel injected. This motorcycle actually looks larger to my eye than this bike here. Very well done, very well done. The work on this is impeccable. Like I said, a good friend of mine, Everett, he, uh, he's known for taking older bikes like this, taking them into little pieces and then putting them back together in ways that uh, just make them run fabulously. And this is another example of that. Now, now if you're interested in anything like this, get yourself down to the mighty mini crop of Samarnia, Iowa, find yourself on Baxter Cycle or go to BaxterCycle.com. Talk to Randy or Jeremy or uh, Mark, and they can help you out with this kind of stuff. They also have, uh, they're the largest supplier of uh, classic vintage British motorcycle parts in North America. They've got warehouses full of that stuff. If they don't have, you're going to have a hard time finding it. They also have all kinds of accessories and gear and all kinds of neat stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's a nice day. I'm going to try to get this thing started again and uh, get it back into the shop. And I'm going to hop on my motorcycle and go for a ride. Y'all do the same, my friends. Life is good. Wahoo! Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two. Almost. Five, four, three, two.